Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Farrell Fingers, 99. Thanks for the suggestion, Farrell. You asked, where did super glue come from? Ah yes, super glue. The miracle that fixes broken mugs, saves your model airplane, and occasionally glues your fingers together in the world's most awkward handshake. But believe it or not, this sticky wonder wasn't invented for home repairs or even on purpose. It was a total accident born out of wartime science, frustrated chemists, and a dash of luck that nearly ruined some expensive equipment. So, grab your safety goggles, because we're diving into the surprisingly hilarious and sticky origin of superglue, right here on Explaining Everything. Our story starts in 1942, during World War II, when scientists were trying to invent clear plastic gun sights for Allied weapons. Among them was a chemist named Dr. Harry Coover, working at Eastman Kodak. His team wasn't trying to make glue at all. They were experimenting with materials called cyanoacrylates to find something that could form precise, transparent lenses. But instead of perfect lenses, Coover ended up with chaos. These cyanoacrylates stuck to everything. Glass, metal, their tools, basically anything with a surface. If it existed in three-dimensional space, it was glued. The substance was so sticky that the scientists couldn't even separate the testing equipment afterward. Imagine explaining that to your boss. Ah, uh, yeah. We fused the entire lab together. Naturally, the team gave up on the stuff. They tossed it aside, thinking it was useless. Because when you're trying to make precision optics, having your equipment permanently fused together is kind of a deal breaker. So, the super sticky material sat forgotten, like an overly clingy X that just wouldn't move on. Fast forward to 1951. Coover, now working at another Kodak lab in Tennessee, teamed up with a colleague named Fred Joyner. This time, they were working on heat-resistant materials for jet canopies. Once again, cyanoacrylates entered the chat because scientists love giving old failures another chance. Joyner tried testing the compound again and, surprise, it glued everything it touched, glass slides, lab gear, probably his sanity. But instead of throwing it away like before, Kuva finally had a light bulb moment. He realized this wasn't a nuisance, it was a feature. This was a material that didn't need heat, didn't need pressure, didn't need waiting, it just stuck. They tested it further and found that cyanoacrylate could bond materials faster than any known adhesive. And this time, Coover saw the potential. This could be the glue to end all glues. In 1958, Eastman Kodak started selling it under the name Eastman No. 910, the very first commercial superglue. The public immediately realized how powerful it was usually after gluing their own hands to furniture. Now, here's where the story gets wild. During the Vietnam War, the US military actually used superglue, yes, superglue, to save lives. Field medics carried spray versions of it to seal wounds quickly before soldiers could reach medical help. It wasn't perfect or sterile, but it stopped bleeding fast enough to keep people alive long enough for surgery. Super glue literally went from oops to operation. Even Dr. Coover received a medal from the US government for his accidental contribution to battlefield medicine. Meanwhile, back in civilian life, 
people were discovering both the magic and the misery of superglue. Its instant bond was both a blessing and a curse. Accidentally glued your fingers together? Congratulations! You now have 24 hours to think about your life choices. There were even TV commercials in the 70s where construction workers used superglue to lift an entire steel beam with just a few drops. Yes, that really happened. It was an ad stunt. And no, you shouldn't try that at home. This little bottle of liquid chaos became a household essential. It repaired broken ceramics, shoes, toys, and relationships. Well, two out of three, anyway. All right, let's talk science. Super Glue's active ingredient, cyanoacrylate, is a monomer. Tiny molecules that love to link up into long chains called polymers. What's wild is that this reaction kicks off instantly when it touches moisture. Even the tiny bit of water vapor in the air, or the natural moisture on your skin. That's why it bonds so fast. It literally polymerizes the moment it touches anything, even slightly damp. That's also why your fingers are its favorite victims. They're just wet enough for an instant reaction. And it's not heat that makes it work, it's chemistry. The glue forms long, tough chains that grab onto surfaces at the molecular level. That's why it sticks so aggressively, even to metal and glass. Basically, super glue doesn't just sit there. It chemically latches onto surfaces like an over-enthusiastic barnacle. What started as a sticky nuisance became a global phenomenon used in surgery, engineering, crafts, and countless oops moments in kitchens everywhere. Dr. Harry Coover's failed experiment literally glued itself into history, proving that sometimes the best inventions aren't planned. They're stumbled into next time you glue your fingers together. Remember, you're holding a piece of scientific history that almost got thrown in the trash. And honestly, that's a pretty sticky legacy. If you now know the sticky origins of superglue, don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe don't play with it. You'll regret it. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.